What's going on guys, Reza back with another video and in today's video I want to cover Rezon and Janice who won the Marvel Cup, the $1 million Super Cup last night. I want to kind of break down how they did it and what their playstyle was, so let's get into it. So overall the tournament was pretty fun, I actually really liked it. Obviously, I did a video covering everything I thought was going to happen, kind of my prediction on the rules and kind of what the meta would be, and I was pretty much spot on. The only difference is that all of the mythics obviously dropped from chests, which was something I kind of couldn't really predict ahead of time. But what I will say is if you want updates like that as quickly as possible, follow me on Twitter. I also posted it in the comments because I actually tweeted saying, hey, this is the updates to the tournament. As soon as kind of OCE was live, I woke up in the morning, so... Try and give everyone an update as quick as possible. I made a post about it on YouTube, but it depends how many people see that as well. So I know a lot of people saw the video, probably didn't see this. So if you want to keep up to date as possible, follow me on Twitter and obviously notifications on. So let's go over a little bit of a quick overview of their kind of play style. And it was pretty much as I predicted, very elimination heavy. Now, if you actually look into the leaderboards here, everyone up in the top five had over six eliminations on average per game. Now this is a ton. If we kind of compare this to the DreamHack opens, obviously it was much lower, kind of under in the high fives. Milan and Chappis kind of popped off in their eliminations being at seven, but in that top five, definitely a lot less eliminations. So it's a relatively comparable format. I would say the semi-finals from DreamHack in comparison to the Super Cup, just purely based on the fact that it was like roughly a thousand people each and kind of similar situations. Obviously, DreamHack is a little bit more stacked. So let's get into some of the kind of intricacies of their gameplay and see how they actually played out these matches and some of the cool little things that they did. So let's take an example from a fight that they had in their first game and kind of break down to how Rezon kind of plays this one out really, really efficiently. So he actually manages to pick up a beautiful 1v2. You can notice at this position that he's behind a wall and takes a jumping shot to the right to hit a big 198 shot rather than actually editing through the cone on the top, which he had the opportunity to because this gives him a much nicer right hand peak to take the shot from. You can also realize after he shoots, he places a wall instantly and then places a doesn't edit in the top left and then kind of jumps around the wall to the left. So he was flying past this opponent also, which is a kind of a right hand peak if they were still alive. Obviously, they were eliminated at this point, but he would have been behind the wall already back behind that right hand peak again. Obviously, he has fantastic aim, so he picked up a big 198 on the opponent, eliminating them in one shot. But if he hadn't, he still would have been in a really good position to follow this up with another right hand peak shot. Next, you can see him drop down to try and fight the other opponent. And again, he's just consistently looking for big shots, taking a shot, trying to place walls as he can, trying to block off the opponent using high walls and especially other floors just to catch himself on to give himself some great peace control and not get boxed by this other opponent. And again, you can see Rezon drop to the right using a ramp. And this is what's really beautiful. Replaces with the wall of this AR, places a cone in the box, and then again, shoots his pump, tries to replace the wall. But when he realizes he doesn't get the wall, he instantly edits his cone to give himself a way out. He then, you can kind of messes up his movement a little bit here. He tries to replace the wall again, but you can see him try to get out of the box again, which would give him a right hand peek. He messes up his movement, still manages to hit the beautiful pump shot on the opponent there. But the point he's trying to make is once he's in this bad situation, he didn't get the wall. What's he do? He doesn't just panic. He edits the cone into a ramp instantly, which gives him that protection. He then reset it to go for a shot, unfortunately missed, but then just trying to escape and get out of the box. This would have made him on that right hand peak over the peanut butter edit that was already there, which gives him a beautiful right hand peak. Now let's take another example of this in a later game actually where he phases into the opponent's box using a nice phase trick where you hit the wall twice and jump through as it's breaking but he cones into the box as he does this and then in this position he's kind of scuffed so he hits the shot and his immediate reaction is again to edit the cone he sets himself at a diagonal angle from the opponent to ensure that he's far away in the box he's not running really close to him touching him just because this gets really really scuffed it's really easy to miss your shots here and because it's his cone in the box his instant reaction is to shoot and then edit that ramp to ensure that he blocks the shot from the opponent again his aim was amazing so he ended up actually just one pumping them but if he hadn't one pumped him he probably would have blocked the shot from the opponent and then instantly reset the cone and then shot him again making sure he took no damage in return so one of the biggest issues that players were facing in the tournament is the fact that there was different material caps from the normal competitive playlists. In normal competitive playlists, you'd have 500 wood, 500 brick, and 500 metal together. So 1,500 materials total. Now in this tournament, there was 200, 200, 200. So a lot less being 600, almost a third of the complete 
total materials that you could have. So a lot of players are struggling trying to use too many materials. Obviously, you can't really box up too much, can't tarp too much. So what are some of the ways that Rezon and Janus went around this? Well, honestly, it's just very simple, just not using any materials where you don't need to. If you take this example, you can see that Janus gets hit by the Unibeam, which does 90 damage, cracks him, and at this point, he needs to heal. Rather than just boxing up where he is, he drops down a few layers to go into an old box that he had that he could just place two walls around and instantly be protected. This saved him all of the rest of the materials, so another four or five builds from building just a fresh new box. So he's very aware of the old materials that he'd used and used all of this to actually heal himself rather than just completely boxing up every single time he got hit. And this is a mistake I saw a lot of kind of opens level players do. Rather than just having the time to go back into some safety, they actually just boxed up instantly using 50, maybe 60 materials to use this box rather than just, hey, I can, I can go behind a corner. I can heal in this safe spot. So being aware of your surroundings was really, really key and something these guys did a lot. And on top of that, it was just the minor small things. If you if you notice again, where Janice is building up on top of this roof in Stark Industries, he only uses three ramps. And because he only needs to use three ramps, and just look at the way he builds them, kind of goes towards the wall, and then a kind of an awkward angle to place the second ramp up, and then places another one before. I feel like a lot of people would have just looked down, placed either like a wall, and then the ramp, or the floor and the ramp. And it's just very, very minor things like this, saving one build at a time, that adds up over the course of the game to save you way more materials. One of the things that I couldn't predict beforehand was the fact that all of the mythics would drop from supply drones and from just normal chests. So we just thought it would be supply drones and the AIs that dropped them normally, but they just came in normal chests and in floor spawns. Now, obviously, this caused a lot of chaos because a lot of the times the teams prefer to take double Unibeam, which does 90 damage through two layers of builds. And this is what Rezon and Janice did very, very frequently, both taking Unibeam and hitting for a combined 180 damage, just ensuring that they timed their shots perfectly. This is something you will probably never be able to do in another tournament again, unless for some reason there's double Unibeam in it again. But this was just something that they clearly adapted to very, very quickly and focused around getting and really prioritized within their inventory. When they didn't have a double Unibeam, what they decided to do was actually use it like a shockwave grenade by getting beneath players, looking directly up, and then shooting out the floor, dropping them into their box, which they did them multiple times and was very, very effective. It was very interesting to see how these players adapted to these new items so quickly and used them just like they've been using them for months and months and months, like the shockwave grenades. One of the things that we saw that was very, very interesting is that they both took the same mythics and both preferred these, which was the Unibeam, which obviously it's the most powerful. And then on top of that, the Silver Surfer's Surfboard. They really didn't use that many of the other ones at all. They did use the Group Ball earlier on, but always preferred these two. The reason for this is that they can obviously W key much easier with it. With the surfboard, they can fly further distances, which if they have low materials, really saves them on rotates, but also they can W key. They can jump into people's boxes. They can transfer to them if they've just hit them back with a big AR shot, or if they've double beamed them with the uni beam, they've got a big damage off. They can then use the surfboard to fly closer to them. The Wolverine's claws just didn't seem like they were using anything like that at all. So it's interesting to see this preference. And when they didn't have this, usually one of them just took double heals. If you can see here, Rezin has both of the Mythics, and then Janus just has one and double heals. It's actually very, very tough to find heals in this meta because there wasn't that many lying around. I'm pretty sure the Mythics took up slots in chests that heals would normally drop, so there wasn't that many shield items. So you can see eliminations are very, very important to ensure that you can actually able to get more shield from your opponents in terms of Siphon and also in terms of just what they have. But inventory space was difficult because there were so many Mythics, so many things to take. So it was a very, very weird balance, but this is kind of how these guys laid out their inventories. And then the game that they picked up their big 23 elimination victory royale, it was this same inventory and then replied into the end game. They were double unibeaming all the time and then simply just silver surfering to take height, spraying back, spraying back, spraying back. A lot of the opponents who were on low ground didn't have many materials because of the lowered material cap and also just didn't have many heals. So they're also very, very weak. So being on high ground and getting ahead of zone, just using your AR to spray back and using that double unibeam when possible made them pick up a huge amount of eliminations. This was by far the most effective way to do this and this is why the combination of the unibeam and the silver surfer surfboard was so good to stay on high ground also obviously being on height saved them a ton of materials because they didn't have to tunnel they just needed to tarp their way in as much as possible so managing to pick up 23 elims in this one game just by w keying using these strategies that i've talked about very very efficiently 
Now, overall, it was a really, really fun tournament. It was interesting to watch. Obviously, it wasn't the most competitive. It wasn't like a big stacked FNCS Grand Finals. It was something different. It was a bit of fun, clearly sponsored by Marvel to kind of produce their product and really promote what they're giving out. I thought it was fun. I hope they keep doing these kind of fun tournaments later on down the road and they kind of get more prizable for that because let's be real, people enjoy just playing something a little bit different rather than just playing the same old tournament over and over and over again. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned a lot. I've been Resub. Please like and subscribe if you aren't already. Peace out. See you.